the biblical truth of our hymns. Today, an interesting one. I haven't heard in a long time. Go tell it on the mountain. Now, the words, this is what it says. I don't, to the point today, I don't know what you can say without offending anybody, but it's a Negro spiritual. And that's described to the words and to the music. Now, a little history first is it's an African American spiritual song compiled by John Wesley Work Jr., or sometimes second, dating back to at least 1865. It has been sung and recorded by many gospel secular performers. It's considered a Christmas carol. Because the original lyrics celebrate the, nativity, the nativity of Jesus. Now we know right now, let's go off to the fact is Christmas is nowhere in the Bible. We do know that there was a baby Jesus. We know it's Bethlehem. We know he was wrapped in swaddling clothes. We know he was in a manger. But there is nothing in the Bible to say it was Christmas, December 25th, or anything there else. Scripture where scripture would probably imply the Feast of Tabernacles in September, the seventh month of the Jewish people. And there's a long list of people, as I said, who have already performed and recorded this hymn. John Wesley Work Jr. may not have originally the Negro spiritual go out on the mountain, but he can take credit for the fact that we sing it and every Christmas. As the son of a church choir director, Work grew up in Nashville loving music. Even though he earned his master's in Latin and went on to teach ancient Latin and Greek, that, that, that's, that's a man who's really gone somewhere. I mean, if he can speak Latin and Greek, his first love continued to be music. He went on to become the first African-American collector of Negro spirituals. This proved to be a daunting task for work because they were pressed down orally from plantation to plantation. No one wrote it down. So we're looking at some of the works of work, no pun intended, excuse me for that. He is about with, with songs and hymns, may I say, plantation, plantation of the slaves in American, African Americans, and from them roots, we got gold telling on the mountain. Uh, very few were ever written down and said, but work proved to be a challenge. Publishing the first book, New Jubilee Sounds, and sung by Fisk Jubilee Singers. Uh, again, this comrades, even though it has the word Christmas in it, and that's not biblical. It is to Jesus Christ. And long the world and Satan would have the, the lie about Christmas, December 25th, though it is the birthday and celebration of Satan and his gods, Tammuz. And that the fact is that the, the mother of God, the queen of heaven, is not Mary, but, you know, Astarte which you would come to Esther and all the, like that. But we're not doing the study of gods right now. And as we go forth to go tell in the mountain, I'd like to open a couple places in our Bible. Isaiah 52, 7. And I'm going to say that, I'm going to be careful how I say it. And when we talk about the slavery in America, it's a rotten, terrible thing. I'm not just saying that to appease anybody. It was. But history, true history would identify. Yeah, there were some rotten slave owners. There were some slaves, slaves that were massively overabused. I'll give that much credit. There were also some slave owners that did and did treat their slaves well. And slaves would come to an education. Slaves would come to know the God of the Bible. And what we forget is part of the church history was, though separated 
whites and blacks. Yes, that happened. There were white drinking fountains. There were black drinking fountains. Okay, I'm, I'm not. We're not talking about that. But in the churches, there was the white men who brought their slaves, the colored people, into their churches, divided, okay, that wrong or right, and the white man and the African heard the gospel of Jesus Christ preached in the, church, in the churches. Again, if I'm saying anything wrong or of color on that, I apologize, but that's the history. And I'm not going to apologize for the history. Now, if I'm saying black wrong or colored wrong, that's what I grew up. Those are the words that I've known from growing up. I don't know what the words are today. I don't get into modern teaching and, and schooling today. And the colored man was brought into the churches that preach the gospel. And we have a source of a carol here, go tell it on a mountain that comes from the slaves, handed down to us that is found in our hymnals. And if the slaves, not all, were so mistreated, why has work, Mr. Work, Come past a bunch of jubilee songs. Near Negro spiritual. If all the entire life of the slaves in America were so rotten and terrible. When a man is happy, he sings. When a man rejoices, he sings. And some of the, the, the music that came from the plantation. We get one of them called Go Tell It on the Mountain, and it is to worship Jesus Christ, our Lord, God, and Savior. And we're going to find Bible in this. Where in the modern garbage in the churches today, you don't find Bible. Here is a bunch of people out of the history of America, mistreated, and yet they can sing praises to God the Father and God the Son going to have a wealth of information. But Isaiah 52, 7, one place, the Bible says, now the title is, Go Tell It on the Mountain. How beautiful upon the mountain are the feet of him that bring good tidings, that publish peace, and bring good tidings of good, and publish salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. Wow. Look at that. Second advent of Jesus Christ, God manifested in the flesh, pronounced by, from plantations. You can't even get a Jehovah Witness to say that Jesus is God. And yet the verse that we get, Isaiah 52, 7, we can find somewhere else in the Bible. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. So, go tell it on the mountains is a first and second advent preaching Jesus Christ. It is also a post-gospel of church-age doctrine that Jesus Christ, the gospel, that Jesus Christ suffered and died, according to scriptures, and was buried. And arose again the third day according to the scriptures. So Romans chapter 10, verse 15. And how shall they preach? Okay, preach. We just learned with the heart man, with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession made unto salvation, what you must do to be saved. Verse 15. As it's written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. And they have not, re re they have not obeyed the, re uh, yeah, excuse me, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. Look at the gospel before and after verse 15. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace 
Notice how the mountain is taken out of verse 15, from which we read in Isaiah 52, 7. That mountain is a reference of the first advent to, to the second advent of Jesus Christ coming back into Jerusalem. Today, is, Israel has rejected as a nation the Messiah. The Gentiles are called in to believe on Jesus Christ as their Savior, and yet there's still Jesus coming back. So, Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. The fact is that we have songs and hymns and carols out of the plantations rules out the fact is that they were all not mistreated again i said granted there were and are were slaves that were mistreated and abused in mark 16 verse number 15 and he said unto them go Ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That matches Romans 10. There's that go. So what do we have a go tell it on the mountain? Go. That's Isaiah 52. That is Romans chapter 10. And that's Mark 16. Go tell it on the mountain. Isaiah 52, 7. Over the hills and everywhere. Romans chapter 10. Go. Mark 16. Tell it on the mountain. Tell them what? That Jesus Christ is born. Yes. Listen, if Jesus Christ was not born, there would be no preaching of death, burial, and resurrection. Now, a lot of Baptists have fundamentally, you know, we, we forget the birthday, we forget all the Christmas, all that, because it's paganism, and yet Christ had to be born. Christ, as part as a prophecy, I'm told 48 prophecies of the first coming, is that Jesus Christ must have been born of the Virgin. He must have been born in Bethlehem. He must have been born of David's lineage. That's all true. Matthew 1, Luke 2. So, yes, Christ had to be born. Go out and proclaim that Christ has been born and also the gospel with Romans chapter 10 and Mark 16 as you go with your feet. All right, so Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. And Luke chapter 2. What we're going to do is we're going to read Luke chapter 2, and then we'll come back. So Luke chapter 2, verse 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord, Jesus Christ, manifests Jesus Christ before his manifestation in the flesh, came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were so afraid. Now, read. You can take this video and this audio, and whatever you can go back and forth, rewinding and fast forwarding. This is all important information that we're going to find in a hymn, a carol, by people that were on a plantation to the adoration and to the worship of Jesus Christ. Angel said unto him, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. That good tidings means gospel, good news. Gospel means good news. What is the gospel? That Here, Luke chapter 2, where we are, Christ, Messiah, has been born. For us, not only is Christ the Messiah, the Savior, Jesus Christ has been born, but today... He's, by the gospel, he's died according to scriptures. He was born according to the scriptures. Prophecy. He was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Much, much 
much. Great joy which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, prophecy, a Savior, prophecy, which is Christ the Lord, prophecy. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Now see, a sign. We sing about the babe in the manger and the swaddling clothes, but what we're not, what is not being taught is that was the sign to the Jewish shepherds where the Bible says Jews require a sign. There it is. We eliminate that true fact. Yes, baby Jesus was in the manger. Yes, baby Jesus was wrapped in swelling clothes. And that was a sign for the shepherds. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God, saying, I got I to gotta stress that, of all the hymns that we have done and carols, saying, we found that misplaced in hymns and carols. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. That's been changed. It came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds one unto another, let us go now even into Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord, the angel of the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, so you see that angel of the Lord is Jesus Christ. Though some teach otherwise. You be at fault. Which the Lord had made known unto us. It wasn't just an angel. Okay. They came with haste. They ran and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad saying, which was told them concerning the child. They went out, they took their feet, and they went and published the good tidings. Not that he's been born, resurrected, but that he's been born. The angels proclaimed to us by a sign that that baby in swaddling clothes in a manger, that baby that we witnessed, that we saw the angels, that is Christ the Lord. That's what we know from Luke chapter 2. Glory to God. When they seen, they made known abroad, saying, which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. Okay, so now let's take go to the mount. Don't tell it on the mount. Look at Isaiah 52, Romans chapter 10, Mark 16, Luke chapter 2. Look at the scripture. And they're praising, and I gotta say it, and someone's gonna hate me, but I'm gonna say, if they're praising God the Father and God the Son, some slaves did not have hardship. Some slaves were introduced to Jesus Christ and the story that's found out in the Bible. Now, not all slaves had that life. All, some slaves were mistreated, abused. When you get a hymn like this coming out, and when we're getting this study, this biblical truth for our hymns, and you're saying, hey, this is great by Stiley Hayward. Wow. So go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go. Man, if you have not studied your Bible and can't see that, you're not going. You're not doing. Tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Again, we're looking at, as far as what this is supposed to be to Christmas, I wish it had some church age doctrine in it, but it does. It's limited, but Christ had to be born. Not better than other carols that I've seen, we've done. While shepherds kept their watches, kept their watchings over, while shepherds kept their watching or silent flock by night, that matches Luke 2. That's exactly what the shepherds doing. It was at night time. I wouldn't call those slaves ignorant. I call many Christians today ignorant. They can get sit in a church and be seen by the man out of the pulpit and not do nothing. <laughs> in all the hymns that we've done so far, you have not heard a rebuke out of me for this one. 
I'm gonna, there's a few rebukes, but there's been other hymns that we've done, been a lot of rebukes. Beholding, throughout the heavens, they're shown a holy light. And that's exactly what the Bible says, Luke chapter 2. Just in case you think it's wrong. The Lord shone around about them. And notice how it says heaven. Some people think, oh, heaven. The biblical truth are there are three heavens. And they wrote about them. They sung about them. And we won't go back, go tell in the mountains again. But the shepherds feared. Why else would the angels say fear not? Are you catching a glimpse that somebody knows the Bible? And trembled when lo, above the earth rang out the angel chorus and held our Savior's birth. And notice they did not say sing. Angel chorus, that's a group of angels. Now, if the intention was for them to be singing, well, the Bible says, saying, verse 13. But this says the angel chorus, a group of angels. And what was it about? Peace on earth and goodwill to men. No, what did these plantation people say? Hail to the Savior, capital S, birth. You know, you can go to modern churches today. I love you, you love me. We are as happy as a bumblebee. Jesus, Nick. No, they won't mention Jesus. Isn't that been one of the problems we have with many of these hymns? They don't even mention Jesus. That's a problem. But wait a minute. Go, uh, uh, you know, I haven't heard this song in many, many years. I can't even sing it. I'm, I'm ashamed to. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hill, and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ. I'm not saying it's custom. There are four stanzas in this in this hymn, this carol, and you guys say Jesus Christ four times. This is not going to be a modern hymn that you can just sing in a modern church today. Like I said, we're not doing the go tell on the mountain, but four times. So Jesus Christ is proclaimed. Stanza three. Down in a lowly manger. How lowly can you get? <laughs> you are where animals eat and live. The humble Christ was born. And God sent us salvation. Do you care to have one verse on that one? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Isaiah 52, Romans 10, Mark 16, Luke chapter 2, and then John chapter 3. I would say that there are some slaves, African Americans, that grew up in the slavery times that had a lot of sense. And they have a lot more sense than Christians today in church. Now here's the problem I have. That blessed Christmas morn. That's the only problem I have so far. And I'm going to tell you right. I will include this hymn as to be sung. I would cross out that Christmas. I would put... God sent us salvation that blessed morn. Just get rid of Christmas. Man, you have you have seen hymns and carols I've tacked, attacked, attacked, and attacked. This, that's the only one I attacked so far. I just erased that Christmas, white it out. I, I be like, you know, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Wipe that out. Sands of four. Now watch stanza four. This is remarkable. When I was a seeker, I saw it both night and day. You want to know where that one came from? Genesis chapter one. 
Night and day. Why didn't they say day and night? Genesis chapter 1. Let me find one here. And it's seven, it's seven times. Seven times. Um, verse 8. You have verse 5, verse 8. Verse 13. And so on. Well, verse 13, it's a it's this little verse. Genesis 1 13. And the evening and the morning were the third day. Verse 5 at the end. The evening and the morning were the third day. At the end of verse 8, the evening and the morning were the third first third day. Second day. 23. The evening and the morning. The evening and the morning. So when this person has sung and they sung both night and day. All right, let's go over it again. Isaiah 52, Romans chapter 10, Mark chapter 16, John chapter 3, I'm forgetting one. Genesis 1, I think I forgot one. Isaiah 52, Romans chapter 10. Luke, uh, Mark chapter 16, Luke chapter 2, and Genesis 1. That's not bad. There is scripture just, just like there's scriptures in Honda's Messiah. I saw it both night and day, and I asked the Lord to help me, and he showed me the way. Now, I'm going to go far-fetched on this one. But if we see Scripture implied here, let's go as far as another Scripture, John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way. Isaiah 52, Romans chapter 10, Mark 16, Luke chapter 2. John chapter 3, Genesis chapter 1, and John chapter 14. How's that? And I haven't heard this, this hymn in a long time. I don't even know if I heard it in the church. I know it used to be over the overheads in stores. What's, uh, do I have the list here? Uh, I hope I didn't get rid of it. Let me see here. All right. Here it is. In 1950, Jackson, or something, Bobby Darlin, Gordon McMacquarie, I'm saying his name wrong, forgive me, Bill Crosby, Frank Sinatra, Simon Gunfunkel, Jim Neighbors, Bob Marley, Anne Marie, Dolly Parton, Vanessa Williams, Garth Brooks, Crystal Lewis, the Blind Boys of Alabama, James Teller, Toby Keith, Sherry Crow, Big Daddy Weave, David Crow, Chowder, Crowder Band, Hunter Hayes, Jennifer Nessels, and just a whole bunch of more. And a whole bunch of albums. Peter, Paul, and Mary. And when you've got this, You've got Jesus Christ being praised. Now this is now I said here too. It was let me look it up. It's sung in every Christmas. There was a thing I saw here that by by the the plantations of slaves, the American Negroes. I'm, I'm not reading. About it. There was this this hymn. This carol was sung. As their Christmas song. It was for the fact of the birth of Jesus Christ. We can remove the word Christmas. And this would be a great, wonderful. That you could sing all year round. It doesn't have to be a carol. And that we are told to go in all the world and preach the gospel. And without the birth of Jesus Christ, there would be no gospel. Without the birth of the babe by the scriptures and the prophecies in a little town of Bethlehem, we would not have a hill on Calvary. 
We would not have a resurrection and a stone rolled away. We would not have Jesus Christ seated at the right hand of the Father and make intercessions for us. As far as one of those carols that we've gone through, birth, this is a wonderful one. Just take your eraser out, your white out, and just remove the Christmas. Because we don't celebrate Christ Mass. That's a church. That's an organization that has a Mary Christ Mass. You don't see Mary in here. Mary's not in this hymn. She's in other carols, but she's not in this one. Again, with four stanzas, you got Jesus Christ. You got the testimony of the shepherds. And there are no wise men that show up in this hymn. That's amazing. And the very last stanza you, you, you sing is about a man that's seeking and God provides him the way, the truth, and the light. And no man comes unto the Father, but by me are the words of Jesus Christ. Just remove Christmas. This would be a good one.